thing this weekend. Um, and so my eldest daughter was up staying with us with her fiancé. Fiancé, I like saying that. That's good. They're, uh, they're getting married. Um, and so since I've not seen her for ages and she was up here on Sunday, I cooked Sunday lunch instead. I listened to the game on Radio Manchester and I have to say it was grim listening. Uh, I have she since saved then, you. She what, saved you the the, the, the experience peg. though, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Although I'd like to have been stood with my with my fellow Saints as we went through our only really horrible loss of the season. We we that's our fourth loss. The other three have all been understandable. This was a throwback to another era of uh, completely inexplicable, horrible performances. One two throw in the bin and start again. Well, when um, I said last week, Saints don't have defeats like this. We do now. Clearly, they were like, oh, bless him. He Hold doesn't He doesn't dear, understand Mark. us. He doesn't understand us. <laughs> oh, my dear. It, it uh, sounded like Saints started sc- scratchy with a few errors in the first five yeah. minutes or so, and then yeah. Salford picked up a couple of interceptions. That kind of started to turn the field position, and Salford took advantage of the field position and then off the back of that then started to score some I remember scintillating scores some awesome tries um, you know and they they broke you on both sides of the pitch although clearly the left side was where most of the spectacular damage was done but they broke you on both sides of the pitch they broke you in the middle too the, you know there was two tries from prop forwards um, and the Dan Sargentson try in the first half and the Brodie Croft try in the second half they are try of the season contenders two full length of the field a few players involved great timing of execution beautiful stuff from the Salford Red Devils that you know look um, what's his chops really Ryan Briley might not like it when we say they play off the cuff because they do play to a structure but boy can this team turn that structure into off the cuff when they when, when they're they firing, yeah, like they were in this game, right. and they take risks. They play. I mean, really exciting rugby. They were they were playing in that game. There's no, you know, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. And thoroughly, thoroughly deserved their win. All the credit should go to Salford. They certainly uh, attacked your weaknesses as well with those edges, didn't they? And Tim yeah, Laffey, I mean, all you heard listening to the commentary was Tim Laffey, Tim Laffey, Tim Laffey. Yeah, with a little yeah. bit of Burgess, a little bit of Rodie Croft. Yeah, a little bit of everyone else. Yeah, yeah um, what a game uh, I had Um I mean, I'm we cl- I mean, so having said, you know, all credit to Salford, totally deserved the win, um, and played some fantastic rugby with Saints, a number of injuries and players Saints, out, which has to be yeah, said. absolutely. But t- Saints are clearly really struggling at the moment across the backs. Um, our our backs is, are a complete mess at the moment, and. Uh, and we let we let that have um, you know get to us, and we didn't we didn't uh, show up um, in in the way in which we'd have liked to have done. Uh, nevertheless, you know Salt, Salt, Salford could only play what's in front of them, and they they kicked our asses. It's not the first time we've been to Salford and had our behinds handed to us. By the way, we we used to make a habit of going over there and. Well, I think you've points. lost there in each of the last three seasons. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. We 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 uh, we, we we do. It does seem to be one of those places that we go to and uh, and regularly get beaten. Not quite as badly as that usually, but uh, that has happened before. And uh, anyway, there we go. So they, brilliant. They, but they this. were they were great and oh, they were brilliant. And like you say, Tim Laffey was <coughs> outstanding. Player of the week. Oh. Look, without a question, I mean, let's do that now. We, stat line of the week, there was people who got a few more metres than him, but no one who had a bigger impact. No. Three try assists, seven tackles, 193 metres, three clean breaks and three successful offloads. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at the beauty of that pass he threw for Brodie Croft's try where he threaded it between the... It just the timing of everything he did. Um, yeah. yeah, so player of the week On for him. Fire. Yeah. On fire he was. The the only the only other player that um, that that might get uh, even close to um, uh, to him would have been Richie Myler with his three tries uh, for Leeds. But, oh God, but yeah, going into Sunday, was... Richie Myler was player <laughs> of the week. <laughs> yeah, 
Joe yeah. Burgess, he, he, he got to be making a case for England inclusion with his form recently. You know, <coughs> wing's well, not a position we're super strong at. With, with no, especially with a few I guys mean, out injured at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, I think you know Johnston uh, and Davies you know, are both done for the year, and Makinson's yeah. injured at the moment. Yeah, Makinson will be back, I think. But, yeah. But I think Marshall. I think Marshall's in with the shout. I think. Um, Ryan I Hall, think Burgess. I think Birch is in with that shot. I wouldn't have Ryan Hall anywhere near. No, but near he played this. in the mid-season, so we have to but, talk about him in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have to talk about it. So <laughs> Marshall, I think uh, Joe Burgess and uh, what's his face up at uh, Leeds, I think is. Ah, uh, yeah, Hanley definitely. Yeah, yeah Hanley. I think are good shouts. <laughs> Uh, do you want to take us through the standings then? Because you get yes, to at least I'd cheer prefer, yourself up. I prefer to do that than talk any more about the Salford game. Uh, St. Helens, despite their appalling loss, stay top on 34 points, uh, with their lead over Wigan still four points now. Uh, Wigan on 30 with only one point less on points difference. That's an no. interesting one, isn't it? Before, yeah. After, before the cup final, we were about 150 points behind you on points difference. Yeah. Yeah, and we've had some tight wins recently and uh, Wigan have let rip over the last month, really, to yeah. to close it off. The league leadership would really still be on if if um, Wakefield had managed to beat you last week. Yeah, it would, definitely. And I don't I don't think it's done yet. I don't think it's done yet, Mark. Um, we'll, we'll need to bounce back very quickly, starting this Sunday on Channel 4. We need to go uh, six from six to do it, and I think we've got another Leeds performance in us yet. OK, well, we'll see. Um, Huddersfield are back in third on 27. Catalan are dropping like a stoner on 26. Um, Cass remain fifth on 22, uh, despite the loss. Salford are still sixth with 20 and lead Hull on points difference only. Leeds in eighth have 19, um, and Hull KR fall to ninth with 18 points. Warrington stay on 10th with 14. Wakefield are off the bottom with 12, and Toulouse on 10. Um, so I think we can say the bottom three are definitely out of the playoff race, but even down to Hull KR, they're still in with a chance. Yeah, I was uh, tempted to run the polls again this week, so why don't you give us your sort of breakdown on on things as you see it happening yourself with as the season pans out yeah i mean that's uh i i think i think saints i think the top four are still the top four still uh despite catalan having a a really dodgy spell which has gone on now for a month they've not they've not played well for a month uh but below that cass salford Hull, Leeds, and even Hull KR, although they've got to start getting some players back and start winning some games, uh, all of those point, all of those teams can still make the last two playoff places, I think. Yeah, I think uh, Hull I, FC with Smith in, if he kicks on like he played his first game, with yeah. Con- Connor back in, in the team and making a difference with the ball, uh, if they find a way to hide him in defence even better, um, that's that's a difference for them and they now have to be rather than last week and it's not just reacting to one result but it's reacting to some no. of the things you've seen out of the players as yeah, well exactly. um, Hulk KR I certainly don't think that any Hulk KR fan needs to be scared about relegation if they were being scared about relegation with all the injuries they've got but um, I, I do worry um, that that they are too injured to yeah. to make yeah, that to make- because of the form that Salford and Leeds are in, yeah, you, you know, I, I think, I think it's, I think they might be thinking about next year and thinking about getting people fixed up and stuff like that now at Hull KR maybe. Yeah, I mean, they would have to bounce back immediately and stay bounced back for a couple of games to give themselves a bit of a run at this. Well, they, they have to beat to lose, and they have to yeah. roll that through to the the last derby of the season. And yeah. I think it's in a couple of weeks' time, in it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Warrington, I still think, is still safe. Uh, I said the last time we talked about this that I still felt to lose were probably going to still be going down, uh, even though they come off the bottom at that stage. Um, I now um, st- I have no reason to change my mind, particularly now that. Uh, 
Wakefield seem to have found a better form. Well, even more so than that, Toulouse have only got one home game left. Um, and I haven't seen anything to suggest they'll win on the road. No, 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 no. You watch, they'll end up being Wigan away. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks' time. That might be your Leeds blowout game, Mark, that you were mentioning before. <laughs> um, in terms of the predictions, like I said, I went one out of six last week. I... <laughs> I blame the teams. Um, Sarah <laughs> went three out of six. So well done to Sarah. She does have the yellow well, cap in the host Super Brew. You stay top. I stay second. Alan stays third. And Sarah is fourth, but with the yellow cap. So she's on a comeback. In yeah. the main Super Brew, you stay top there as well, David. That just tells us everyone had a shit week. Apart from Hull FC fans, because Brendan Loftus has the yellow cap there. So that's two Hull <laughs> FC fans in our competitions with yellow caps this week. <laughs> yep, indeed. Uh, Neil Ormston extends his lead at the top in the Fantasy League, but Tom Andrews in sort of the top 10, but not in contention for the top prize, I don't think now. But he top scored this week with a brilliant 785 points. So well done, Tom, on that. Thanks to everyone who got their fan views in on the matches this week. Great to have multiple views on all of the games. Love it. Keep them coming, guys. Um, We'd love to hear from some Salford fans. If you're listening and you're a Salford fan, you know what you need to do. Get your voice heard. Um... Okay, although most of us were Salford fans this week, weren't we? Let's face it. Uh, um, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I will be next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is Super League round 21, done and dusted, fully covered. We're now going to move on to other results. <laughs> Okay, other results, David. Um, do you want to do the scores? I'll do the context around the stuff. Um, we'll start yeah. with the Women's Super League. Yes, let's do that. So for uh, Women's Super League, in Group 1, it was Huddersfield nil, Leeds 82. Uh, it was St. Helens 12, York 4. Uh, and in Group 2, uh, Barrow 12, Featherstone 4. Lee Miners Rangers 50, Castleford 4. And Wakefield nil, Warrington a massive one hundred and two. And there is a bit of context around around that one, but a uh, great win for St Helens. It's their their first win against the other big sides, isn't it? So yeah. Um, so now we'll see. It's it's all about waiting for the playoffs between those top three sides um, in the women's Super League Group One. But yeah, that Warrington result against Wakefield. So Wakefield released a statement, didn't they, at sort of explaining the the result really? Because they had to give debuts to a couple of young players from their academy, and they had to bring in six players on loan from Bradford just to be able to fulfil the fixture. Now, there's a little bit of an issue with like planning, given that some of the players were on holidays and stuff like that you know it's 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 not a professional game is it the women's game so i'm not judging the players for that no but, but certainly you know these things could have been thought about in advance but then the schedule was mixed around weren't it when castleford dropped back down and clearly they belong in this division losing 50 points to to four to, to lee miners and sitting bottom of that table so but um yeah big effort from wakefield to get this game on um they could have taken the 48 points loss loss yeah. but the RFL had also sort of said about the potential consequences of their position in the in this division being under in jeopardy potentially. I don't know exactly how it would have been phrased between the RFL and with with the club in in, in any conversations or yeah. exchanges about that sort of thing. But obviously, there's something sat there around that. We've already seen the RFL come out and say they need to rethink length of bans in the women's game because of the proportion of the season that they apply to because it's a shorter yeah. season. I think they need to think about... It's it's clearly a, an issue striking that balance between wanting it to be on the pathway to becoming elite competitions like we want to see our women's sport being. We've just seen some great stuff in women's yeah. sport. Yeah. You know? Um, but recognising that these players aren't aren't paid a lot of them are very young a lot of them uh, you know it's just all of them are giving up their time to do this for the love of it um at, at, the, at the moment and striking that balance between how they treat these clubs as effectively amateur community clubs even though they're in a competition dressed up as the super league it, it, it's a balance that the rfl still working on yeah. i think yeah yeah no that's i think that's a fair comment uh 
Mark, I hadn't heard that um, uh, that story about Wakefield. I hadn't uh, caught up with that. 